And now for our uh, final speaker uh, today, I want to welcome Congressman Greg Landsman, a freshman Democrat from Ohio's first district and a ranking member of the House Small Business Subcommittee on Economic Growth, Tax, and Capital Access. Congressman? You all can clap. Thanks for joining <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Well, I remember talking at our new members reception. Um, okay, you've been a new member uh, for not too long. Takeaways, surprises. Wait, can I do uh, yeah, one thing? Go ahead. Can you move over here? <laughs> this is my daughter, right here. <laughs> yeah, I don't, get some, I don't get that many opportunities to do this. <laughs> That's cool. I would like you to, <laughs> round of applause for my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> She's gonna kill you later. <laughs> You get to sit next to the photographer, it's cool. <laughs> okay, thank you, sorry. All right, so yeah, reflections on your first term so far. One is the impact for, the, the, the opportunity, the possibility for impact is enormous. I mean, I was at City Hall, City Hall, I love city government, local government's the best, uh, and you can have a lot of impact on people's lives. The, you know, the, the enormity of the impact up here is just, you know, it's breathtaking. Uh, and, 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 and some of that has to do with casework, helping people, uh, you know, whether it's a passport or a larger immigration uh, related issue. I mean, we've secured almost eight, nine million dollars in tax refunds uh, for folks. We just secured in the appropriations bill about 15 million dollars in, you know, investments for big projects in our district. And then there's all the legislative stuff. So, you know, it's just, it's really incredible how much impact you can have. DC is, is, is broken. Um, is it more broken than you thought? Yeah, it, yeah, in the sense that, uh, you know, what, even though there's, you know, a, a, a bazillion bipartisan bills that get introduced, uh, my name's on, I don't know, hundreds of them or a, a ton of them. What comes to the floor at the moment are the more political messaging bills that seem to uh, appease the folks on the far, far right. And, um, you know, that's obviously a problem. I mean, Congress is supposed to be working and there are all of these big issues facing the economy uh, and our families, uh, small businesses, and there are a ton of bills that we could bring to the floor right now and then the other big issue uh, that we don't talk about enough is the divide between the House and the Senate. Right. Uh, it took me a couple of months, with, with the exception of the senators from Ohio, you know, who I'll see either on, uh, on a plane or sure. in the district. I did not see a United States senator until late March. Right, so you don't, the, the two don't interact. There's not bicameral work. And that's really problematic because as we all learned early on in grade school, how a bill becomes a law, it does require going through both chambers. Uh, and uh, you know, that is a big issue. And part of that has to do with the Senate rules and the fact that, uh, you know, in my opinion, it's, you know, the filibuster is undemocratic and, and we're not able to get you know, uh, stuff that we pass through the Senate as, 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 um, as it should be. A lot of it, it just has to do with culture and, you know, the fact that it's just not a muscle that has been built up, right. this idea of working not just in a bipartisan way, but in a bicameral way. So they take immigration reform, really complicated. Yet if you sit people down, there's a handful of things everyone agrees on. Uh, the rhetoric gets in the way. But if you had Republicans and Democrats in a room, that'd be great, and we could do that. You also need to make sure that it's House and Senate members, and that doesn't happen enough, and, and that's a big problem. Just along those lines, I heard a story, I can't reveal names, but there was a, a House member on the Senator's only elevator. The House member was asked <laughs> to leave the, the, the elevator. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah. this, After saying, well, I, I am uh, in, in the House, Senator's only. So, there you go. I mean, this is a cultural <laughs> issue. I mean, um, how many of you have walked over to the Senate? I mean, from the House, right? How many have been to the United yeah. States Senate? Okay, yeah, all right. You walk over there. Uh, you notice the floors change? I mean, it's almost like there's, a, uh, there's this little thing that's like, hey, uh, you should go back. 
<laughs> things are different over here. <laughs> things are nicer here. Yeah, yes, so, yes. I, you know, and that's something we're going to have to, because we do have huge problems or opportunities. Uh, the country is in an infinitely better place than it was several years ago. Sure. Uh, uh, but we've got big reforms to our democracy that have to get passed. Uh, we, ha we have to deal with the freedom issue and whether or not everyone is fully free everywhere. And then the economy. There, you know, just it's there. It's still very much broken for for most people, and and of course for small businesses, there, uh, there there's just a litany of things that have to get done. So getting Congress to work together is, you know, is is core to all that. We've been talking this morning about access to credit and feedback from small business owners. What do you hear from your constituents, small business owners? It won't be new. It's all access to affordable capital. Interest rates are super high, and that makes it even more difficult. A lot of our small businesses uh, don't have relationships with banks or enough banks, right, because you have to have a couple of, uh, of options because uh, you're, you're going to get turned down. Um, uh, more than than not, and then you know the big thing for for me is uh, getting you know folks back to work and making sure the economy works for everyone. And a big part of that is childcare. Now most people don't know this, and I didn't you know uh, when I first started years and years ago on this issue. But most childcare providers are small businesses. We think of childcare, and and at least I did. I thought non nonprofit, and some are. But most are small businesses, and in, in cities, in, in my uh, district, uh, most are black owned. Most are run by women, black women. And not only do they not have the same rela have relationships with bankers, uh, they don't have time to go spend time. I mean, they are literally running a childcare business, helping us you know, run an economy. And so the SBA for childcare providers and a whole host of other small businesses uh, was really built for an economy 20, 30, 40 years ago, not this one. And so uh, we do need to you know, f fundamentally update the SBA so that it is helping all of our small businesses, not just the ones uh, that have been in the mix for, for some time now. How do we do that? Because that's, I mean, that's, you know, it's 2023 and you have, you, you need relationships with bankers, right? Yeah. Um, but as you mentioned, a lot of small business owners don't have the opportunity to to spend that time yeah. and form that relationship. So how can that change? So I think I'm going to start with uh, uh, a ch child care. I think you should start with one group and see how you can uh, take what exists in, 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 in the SBA, make it work, figure out where the gaps are, and then see if that applies, if you can get it to work for one group. And I think child care, I would argue, is at the top of the list right. um, because of how much they help they need uh, what they're doing for children, what they're doing for workers, uh, and, and, and then obviously what they're doing for businesses and the economy. So you do it for, for child care, and then I think you start to appreciate what it would look like for everyone else. Um, as you know, uh, there was a big deal on the debt limit, and now there's a big fight over what that deal was. Okay, now we're looking. Do you think there's going to be Although it's in writing. So <laughs> it's we, in writing. Yeah, it is yeah, in writing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, will there be a government shutdown? I mean, I hope not. I mean, you know, let's just be clear, because the politics sometimes uh, starts to um, obscure what really matters. Think about how many people rely on us doing just the basic, which is funding their government, using their money uh, to invest in their lives, and passing a budget that simply uh, does that should be the basic, uh, most obvious uh, thing that is expected of all of us. Uh, and if we don't, th you know, what happens is that people get hurt. People that we care about, that we are here to serve, they get hurt. And, and, and the stories end up being about how, you know, is the Repu you know, are the Republicans, you know, going to get blamed for this? Will it be the Democrats? Right. It's, it's about the adults up here and not the human beings uh, throughout the country and the small businesses who, who all depend on the system to function. And when the government shuts down, the system does not function. Uh, and, 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 and people don't get paid. They don't get their health care. I mean, you know, uh, it is 
it is absolutely horrible what, what it does to people we know, you know, siblings, parents, grandparents. Uh, so my hope is that we continue to push that uh, as a reminder, as people are jockeying for power and influence and getting this bill and making sure that this amendment is there so they can go on Twitter and cable news and say, hey, I did this, that you're messing with people's lives. Uh, talking about that polarization, um, and we do live in polarizing times. I've talked to, to House members who say sometimes you know, two members uh, can walk by each other in the hallway. They don't even say hello. Um, you remember the Problem Solvers Caucus, but uh, talk, let's, let's flip that. Let's talk about the positive aspects of it, because I don't think the media focuses on, on that there are yeah. a lot of people who want to come and solve problems um, and not play games, and, and talk a little bit about that, about relationships with the other side of the aisle. Thank you. At 100%. So this is, it, it, Congress is a reflection in many ways of, of uh, it's gerrymandered, so not a perfect reflection, um, right. but it's still in the sense that in American politics, the vast majority of people are somewhere in the middle. They're not centrist necessarily, all of them, but they're like, you know, uh, Democrats or Republicans or unaffiliated, but they are not, they would not consider themselves to be uh, as part of the far left or the far right. Right. Only 10, 15% on either side, right? So that 70% of us are in the middle, somewhere in the middle. That's the same for the United States Congress. It doesn't act that way. Uh, and it doesn't get reported that way, but the majority uh, of us are, are so excited to sign on to bills. So when you watch C-SPAN and everyone, if you, if you watch there, uh, you'll see people have um, floor cards and they're passing out floor cards. Th those are almost always bipartisan bills. And to, to say, hey, will you sign on? And people get excited. Yeah, this is a, because that's why they're there, not everyone. Uh, that's not why Matt Gates is there, but most people are there because they really want to solve a problem. And so somebody hands you a, a, a document that says, hey, here's a solution. And you just, you look at it and I, I see it all day, all day on the floor. Oh yeah, put my name on it. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, it, even if those things did get to the floor, they probably wouldn't be reported on in the way in which controversy and conflict is reported on because, quite frankly, it doesn't make for good TV. Uh, but we do need to get it to the floor. And, and so that is a big uh, recess push, August push for many of us. And I've talked to the speaker and other folks uh, who are very close to the speaker. There is a desire. There really is. Uh, and I think you know that, that group, um, the Freedom Caucus, the Chaos Caucus, that. Uh, group that does not represent um, where we as a Congress or a country want to go. They, you know, they, they do have a lot of pull. And, um, but I, I, I do believe that there's much more energy uh, and you just got to figure out how to make it happen uh, to do all the, the meaningful bipartisan work. That's the trick, right? Yeah. Making it happen. Okay, but, but let's talk about that. What would you like to see happen that would help the economy, would help small businesses? What, what, what bipartisan thing uh, is doable? And maybe it, can't be, maybe it can't be done. As you know, legislation sometimes takes a decade to happen. Yeah. What do you think should be done? What should this Congress do? What we've been talking about with uh, my Republican friends and, and folks uh, in the Speaker's office is like, you know, quote unquote, you know, singles, right? Like right. no home runs. We don't have to, not every, you know, everything has to be a home run. What are those, you know, if we can every week just get into the habit of passing, uh, and this one's more complicated than not, but interest payments for small businesses were tax deductible until this year. That should be back on the books. Okay. And there is a group of bipartisan folks who want to see that happen. It would make a big difference for folks to be able to write off their interest payments. Uh, to me, that's a big one. I mean, this isn't going to be a game changer, but one of the things that um, ultimately will, uh, is to set up some sort of mechanism leadership within the SBA around small uh, around child care providers. Mm -hmm. uh, so we can start to figure out how to do that. Uh, their, uh, their earned income tax credit is something that is supported by both Republicans and Democrats. It helps to take really low wages and add uh, to those wages. We are working on changes 
uh, that we believe will be bipartisan, um, uh, will be supported by, by, uh, by Republicans, and hopefully make it to the floor uh, with the right pay for. Uh, and that allows us to continue to say, hey, uh, you know, we need folks to be working, but when, when you do, you're going to be able to pay all your bills. We have run out of time. Please thank the Congressman for joining us this morning. Hey, hey thank thanks you. so much, Congressman. Yeah, appreciate thank it. You. Thank you, Congressman Landsman and Bob Kuzak, and a big thank you to all of our guests this morning. That brings us to the end of the program. Please turn to the back of the room, and please make sure that you uh, get a popsicle from Hara Gourmet Pops, which look very delicious, on your way out. On behalf of, behalf of the Hill and our sponsors, Wells Fargo, we'd like to thank everyone who joined us here in person and online. If you miss any portion of today's discussion, you'll find the full event video will be available on thehill.com shortly. And please, please share and uh, circulate the content you saw today. Thank you, guys. Have a great rest of the day.